What is up, everybody? Happy Monday to you. I hope that you are enjoying your morning. To have reparations or not to have reparations, that is the question. Now, me personally, and like I said, I'm a foundational Black American. Honestly, all of these Black movements, right, it just seems like there's another one that pops up like every decade, it seems. And so I remember the Eidos movement. It was Adolf's American descendants of slaves, and they were, you know, lobbying for reparations on behalf of descendants of chattel slavery. Then you have the FBA movement, which led by Tariq, and I think the Adolf's was Yvette Carnell, I think her name is, and then this FBA movement led by Tariq Nasheed, which pretty much wants the same thing, right? And, you know, honestly... <clears throat> I'm a little sketchy about the FBA movement a little bit only because I find that there's, you know, with all the fervor and rhetoric, I feel like there lacks real pragmatic conversation and even economical common sense. Now, I understand that Black Americans for decades now, we have watched millions and billions of money, trillions, I'm sorry, of money go to every other place, every other type of people, but us. And because we have pretty much been the primary target of demonization in America, you know, I understand why many of us feel as though these entitlements are owed and, and they're worth fighting for. But these entitlements are also a political leverage point. And the Democrats have, you know, attempted to use reparation and they have used reparations um, as a way to inspire black people to make a political decision. They dangle them whenever it's convenient for them, right? So to get Joe Biden, you know, or get the attention of Joe Biden, right? Gavin Newsom, was like, oh, we're going to start this California reparations board and all that good jazz. The crazy thing about it is, and it's kind of just kind of weird to me, is that why would the reparations committee start in California? It wasn't a slave state at all. And I know some people make the argument, well, what happens in California, it trickles out and say the entire nation. And it's like California, unfortunately, is not a great model for the United States at all. These democratic models are not great models for the United States at all. Um, but off of that, like it just seemed kind of contradictory to me that it would pop off in California. But off of that, right, I've been listening to people make discussions. I listened to Tariq and she did a podcast last night talking about the reparations. And, you know, this is my issue with our, you know, black intellectuals, if you will, who are leading the charge on a lot of these movements, right? They don't really come with full circle um, information on the table and realism, right? It's all about the entitlement. We're fighting for the entitlement and we're not even going to be realistic about anything else going on around this entitlement. And I've said this before, and it's a very unpopular opinion and it's fine. I don't care. But when you look at the economic state of the United States right now, and then you just kind of go back and how black people have been prioritized, you know, in the past, it's like reparations is not only not viable, right? And w based off of the demands, right? Um, it, it will basically contribute to the collapse of the United States in so many different ways. Because you already got the U.S. dollar that is volatile because of all the sensational overseas self-interest spending that has pretty much made next generations of Americans, no matter what color they are, slaves to a system, right? The system is collapsing. We're not producing, right? Our companies aren't even producing like that. And I mean, there's so many red flags in the U.S. economy. You know, I think that, you know, people who want these entitlements, they should be very realistic about them. 
you know, they should be very realistic about them and they should be putting that realism on the table. And when I listen to these reparations discussions, I don't see a lot of realism. I don't see a lot of just straight realism that this is what we want, guys. And this is what we are going to continue to fight for. We're going to, if they can't address this, then we're not going to make a political decision, right? But I feel like some people are trying to make this stuff so definitive in these political cycles. And the way that it's being framed, it really does look like there's some political bias here. I feel like in some of these reparations think tanks, there seems to be that swing of rhetoric towards Trump. And like I said, people should vote for whomever they want to. Um, I find that many people in these spaces tend to be more independent leaning. They don't have any political party ideology, but it does seem like the conversation leans towards Trump for the very reason that the Democrats have continued to play in black people's face when it comes to reparations. And they know it's not viable. They know it's not going to happen outside of a tax break. They know they're never going to be able to meet the demands of these reparations board, but they're going to keep playing in black people's face. And black people need to stop letting these people play in our faces and just be realistic. Start pushing out numbers of where they're spending money and justify why they can't divert that money to the reparations movement, right? Ukraine and Israel are getting black people's reparations right now. And I think we need to be realistic about that. But anyways, you guys, I didn't want to make this a long one. I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful uh, Labor Day. Um, and um, I am laboring right now, getting ready to, I got one load in, I'm about to put another load in. Um, I'm laboring because I want to make sure that we are all set for the school week. Got to go to the grocery store because my kids, they are like against school lunches. So it's like, hey, I'm laboring today, but y'all have a good day. And let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think that the conversations, the movements, the push, the hopes, the ambitions about the reparations for black people, do you feel like there's a hint of unrealistic, unrealistic, it lacks realism. It's unrealistic. Do you think there's a level of unrealistic uh, aspect to it? I feel like that's not the word. Give me the word. But anyways, you guys, you have a good day and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.